What is sustainable fashion? Like, actually. As brands continue to hop on the sustainability bandwagon with their eco-conscious collections, their greenwashing campaigns, and basically all lies, I wanted to hop on here and talk about what a truly sustainable fashion system looks like. Because look, these brands have gotten so good at greenwashing, so good at claiming that they're sustainable when they're not, and I think it just takes understanding what sustainable fashion really is for us to be able to confidently call out bullshit. So that's what I'm hoping to do today. I hope that you enjoy. Let's get empowered and let's dive in. To explain sustainable fashion, we first need to explain sustainability. Like what is sustainability? What is sustainable? Sustainability is defined in so many ways and they're all so vague. That's why all these brands have been able to get away with throwing the term around loosely without being held responsible, without actually having to follow through with things because you can do things to be more sustainable. Does that mean you're sustainable? No. Here are a few definitions when we Google sustainability or sustainable. The ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level. The avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain ecological balance. The ability to maintain or support a process continuously over time. When we're talking about sustainability in fashion or sustainable fashion, we basically mean fashion that can be produced in a system that can be maintained continuously over time. So in order to do that, let's now talk about what a truly sustainable fashion system looks like. The biggest thing we need to change is shifting to a closed loop system. A closed loop system is basically one where it's in a continuous circle. So when we're thinking about inputs and outputs, they're basically reused over and over again and that sustains itself over time. The key thing I basically want you to take away from what a closed loop system is, is that what products are available in the system depend on the availability of resources. And the availability of resources depends upon the rate that activities consume and produce them. So basically what's going in depends on what's coming out and what's coming out depends on what's coming in. So there's always going to be this balance. When we're really talking about just the fashion industry in general, it is the opposite of sustainable. It's in this linear system where the things that we're even using, the inputs that we're putting into it, we're still relying on fossil fuels. We're still relying on these finite resources that are depleting. And at the end of the cycle, when we're done with our clothes, they're basically going to waste because they can't break down. It's basically petroleum. We're wearing oil. A lot of the synthetic fibers that are on our bodies are oil. So both of those things go against all of these loose definitions of sustainability that we've already thrown around. The two big things that we need to shift in this industry, and this also supports it being a closed loop system, is one, on the energy piece, we need to shift to fully renewable clean energy. And that's something that is so easy to commit to right now. That's the first to do from this video because you know we love action items. How are we going to get this industry to commit to going fossil fuel free? Not just this industry, beyond this industry, but we're just talking about fashion here. So that's the number one question. And two, it's to switch to fully bio-based materials. And when we switch to bio-based material, clothes will then be biodegradable or compostable. At the end of that life cycle, it goes back into our earth and biodegrade and that allows our earth to then provide us with more of these biomaterials to create new clothing. So that already supports this shift to a closed loop system. In this system, it doesn't really matter how much we're consuming because there is no waste. And that takes away so much of the responsibility of the consumer to do better, to be more sustainable. And I think that's just something that has been done so well in marketing, especially in fashion marketing, where we think we need to do better, we need to make better choices. That idea is so flawed because we're trying to do better in a system that was not sustainable in the first place. This system would have never succeeded in the first place. The only reason that we still have it is because it supports capitalistic greed. That's just food for thought. So when we actually take a step back and look at what a sustainable industry looks like, it's like, okay, well, hold on. Look at all these parts of this industry that are controlled by brands and should, in an ideal world, be impacted by government, by regulation, by legislation, and how we do have a say because we should be voting for governments that will, you know, progress this forward and brands that will also listen to that. But it's not just on us when we are trying to do better in a system that is already flawed to begin with. When we're talking about what is sustainable fashion like actually, we need to reimagine the entire system. The system that we have right now is never going to work. And that's another key takeaway from this video. I think there are a lot of things that also come for free when we think about switching to this closed loop system because obviously it'll come with a fully traceable supply chain. This system also supports living wages, it supports equity because in order for this system to work, every single component, because it is intersectional, supports every other piece of the system. 
and that means equity. Right now in this linear system, it's so focused on power imbalances, on how we're exploiting basically our resources, the global south, developing countries, yada, yada, yada. With equity comes ethics. Okay, and hear me out. This system also helps sustain the lives of the others in this system, not just the people that are buying the clothes and the people that sell the clothes, the big, you know, fashion names. When we get the fashion industry to go fossil fuel free, what that actually takes is these big brands having to invest in these developing countries that they're currently exploiting. They will be supporting new infrastructure in these developing countries so that they also have access to clean energy. When we switch to this type of system, it'll be way harder for these rich to hoard wealth. I'm just so tired of a system that allows them to get away with that and then continues to put the pressure on us as consumers to try to do better. The brands right now should be doing better. We know right now that fashion is a huge contributing factor to global warming, to the climate crisis, and that in the climate crisis, people of color, women of color, are the ones that are disproportionately affected. People in developing countries, the ones where they're not even emitting that many emissions are being affected because of the rich people basically like us in the global north that continue to operate the way that we operate. We know, you know, fashion billionaires shouldn't exist. They are basically lining their pockets because they do not care about how they make those profit margins. And yes, in my perfect world, we would have a government that would put a cap on how much profit these billionaires can take home. We would have a cap on how much clothing that these fast fashion brands can produce, but that's again, another video. So to sum it all up, to answer the question of what is sustainable fashion, it is a piece of clothing that is made in this closed loop system where from when it was made, it's using clean renewable energy from infinite resources. And when we're done with it, when it is broken down, it can break down to go back as nutrients into this earth, which then provides us with more materials to create more clothing. And along the way, every single person that has you know, any impact or has touched that piece of garment from when it was a single fiber to when it was spun into yarn to when it was made into fabric to when it was made into a piece of clothing, everybody along the way also has access to the resources around them to live, you know, baseline good life. I don't think sustainable fashion really exists in its truest form today. There are obviously brands that are making more sustainable choices through their supply chain. Have I come across any brand that is fully sustainable? No, because we're operating in this linear capitalistic model as a whole. But that doesn't mean that we can't support these brands that are doing better. What I hope that we can all take away from this video is that when this flawed fashion industry claims that it's becoming more sustainable, it really isn't. It really just feels like they're slapping band-aids on all of these wounds that are so deep, that are internally bleeding. And the more that we continue to just follow that path, nothing's ever going to change. So I'm hoping that as we really start defining what the system should and could look like, we'll be able to start getting there. So yes, all the things that we can be doing better right now, we should still continue to do. But on top of that, I think we need to keep pushing for who has the power right now. Like it's probably local organizations, global organizations that are putting pressure on brands and on government to commit to doing all these things. So I'm gonna leave a few links and resources down below for how you can petition on things that you can read more about and follow me on Instagram, on TikTok as I continue to share these resources as I find them. But I know that there are things out there that exist that we can say, yes, I also believe in this, let's make this happen. And I am not naive to think that this is gonna happen tomorrow, five, 10 years from now, but I do think that we need to start moving towards that. And the first thing, the first step to doing that is to understanding what it actually looks like. I guess that is my long, tangential answer to that question. I can't believe it took me a whole video to answer that, but let me know if you agree. Let me know if you think that there are other things to add. Like I said earlier, this is a very nuanced topic and I'm trying to just explain it in a general way so that people can understand. I'll try to break these big, big ideas down into more specific videos in the future. Let me know if you want me to start anywhere specifically. Also summarize all of our key learnings, our action items down below. <sighs> I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed. 
and I will see you in my next video. But I would love to hear your thoughts, so please comment down below. Please leave a like if you want to see a more sustainable fashion system. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. Hope you stick around. Bye.